slide across. Fantastic. Okay, thank you. So um, we've got a short number of slides and I will just uh, talk to this first one uh, and really touch on what the vision is or our vision for Marta Hill and why we have elected to utilise the uh, ministerial infrastructure designation process. So uh, as I would uh, assume most of you are aware, Marta Hill is part of the fabric of this community and it has provided quality care and compassion to the community for over a hundred years. Marta is indeed also part of our broader community with approximately one in five Queenslanders having been born here. So Marta's vision for Marta Hill is to create a contemporary integrated health education, research and wellbeing precinct that will continue to serve the community for many, many years to come. This vision for Marta Hill is underpinned by our overarching Marta vision, which is to continue to serve our community through compassionate transforming healing ministries. Our community has changing healthcare needs and we need to recognise this um, and we need to look specifically in this campus to upgrade and modify our infrastructure to respond to these changing needs. Our last major investment on the campus was the Marta Mothers, which was opened back in 2008. So we, we, have, um, we have work to do to keep up uh, in providing that contemporary uh, response to need. In August last year, Marta began consulting with the community about the long-term development of our Marta Hill campus. We've been engaging with the local, state and federal governments for many years, facilitating ongoing conversations regarding the future of Marta Hill campus to ensure that we're meeting the expectations of the community. We've therefore developed a conceptual master plan to guide the future long-term development of the campus. The master plan provided in the material uh, that you have access to is a conceptual plan that demonstrates what could be on the campus rather than a plan of what will be. So it's, it's conceptual in nature. So to provide MARTA with the planning certainty that we need to achieve our vision and, and meet the changing needs, we will be applying for a Ministerial Infrastructure Designation or MID uh, from the Queensland Government. The MID process assists with describing a holistic long-term vision rather than a piecemeal approach to individual developments across the campus. Importantly, this process enables MARTA to seek feedback and consult with stakeholders and the community, obviously including yourselves, and combine this information with the future service need to deliver an informed outcome. The MID process requires MARTA to respond to your feedback within our application to the Minister. So we welcome all of you to um, uh, provide us with that feedback either during today or tonight's session or um, alternatively through the website. We're excited about our plans uh, for Marta Hill, and I'm sure you will be too. It's vital, it is a vital opportunity for us to ensure that Marta can deliver quality patient care to future generations of Queenslanders. Um, I'll now hand over to Sam Down for the next slide. Thank you, Graham. I really appreciate it. So I suppose um, Graham's outlined, um, before we step into the master plan, as Graham outlined, we'll just take a step back just to sort of um, ex just sort of uh, re immerse ourselves of where Marta Hill sits in the broader context. And it's probably noticed it's critical to the redevelopment of Marta Hill as a fully integrated health precinct. We need to really understand the physical and the geographical factors that, that drive, I suppose, that will drive the campus's development. And we need to look at ways in which we can leverage those opportunities. So it's of no surprise that Marta Hill is strategically located adjacent to the busway. Uh, and it is also strategically located adjacent to the future Brisbane Metro, which provide um, 
increased frequencies into the CBD and beyond. In addition, it benefits from other uh, exciting infrastructure projects such as Cross River Rail. But not only on the infrastructure side, it's also strategically positioned within close proximity to the accommodation, food and retail precincts in South Bank. It's got connections into the city through the Goodwill Bridge and it has access to Kangaroo Point, Cliff, uh, Point Cliffs. The other aspects is, is MARTA is also surrounded um, by a number of uh, very uh, prestigious and prominent schools, such as Brisbane State High School, Somerville House and St. Lawrence's College. And we acknowledge that there are, there are the residential um, development further to the south. So all of these, are, um, as, as in preparing the master plan, all of the contextual considerations were are considered. So looking at the opportunities, uh, the advantages and the opportunities that we can leverage from, as I said before, there's a, the, the precinct represents a significant community health, education and research service area within the heart of Brisbane's inner city. It's perfectly um, positioned next to the busway and it has a high visual presence from Stanley Street and Anley Road. There are, however, as we went through, the, the team went through the campus, there are a number of areas of um, underutilized space and there are challenges around wayfinding. The opportunities that we can leverage in the master plan, as I'll talk to in a second, is looking for um, ways of creating new built form for contemporary and sustainable healthcare. We can look at opportunities to enhance green space that will support wellbeing. There's also the opportunity to provide additional food and retail options, but absolutely importantly, there's opportunities to reinvigorate and retain the important heritage fabric that the site offers. So what does this all look like? So as um, Graham pointed out before, the master plan is an aspirational vision. It is an idea of what may, may occur. It's not necessarily what will occur, but you need to, uh, the, the point of the master plan is really to stimulate thinking about what the Marta Hill campus could become. So I'd like to take this opportunity just to go through a few of the key aspects of the, the Marta Hill master plan. One of the key um, aspects of the proposal is looking at the new clinical services building in the general location of where the Duncombe building is today. This new clinical service building is really the cornerstone of this master plan as it provides an opportunity to reimagine the campus. Adjacent to the new clinical services building is a new integrated um, emergency vehicle uh, drop-off, which are with um, parklands above. There's also an opportunity to reinvigorate Raymond Terrace and provide additional food and beverage and dining options and really enhance this street. In addition, there's opportunities to enhance pedestrian wayfinding along the, along the terrace. One of the core um, aspects of the master plan, as you'll see on the screen, is it's very green. There's an opportunity for a significant number of new landscape green open spaces that really um, celebrate the core heritage, which as you can see has been, is proposed to be retained, considering it is of significance and it's an incredibly important part of Mata's history. In addition to um, the heritage buildings, there's an opportunity to reimagine the front door of, of Mata through the, an upgrade to the existing Mata mothers and looking at opportunities of how the campus will provide better connectivity and enhance pedestrian wayfinding. Probably of a key significance is an opportunity to reimagine the property, the areas are, uh, fronting Clarence Street to a new built form comprising podium and, and low rise tower topology. Looking at the heights which are proposed in the master plan, which you'll see in the, the circles, the, the heights proposed in the master plan concentrate the key height around Stanley Street and the top end of Emily Road. This has been deliberately done to keep the and to keep to step the height away from residential properties to the south. It's really important to note here that the Brisbane City Plan contemplates for a height of up to 20 storeys across the entirety of the site, but MARTA in its thinking has, has chosen to reduce that height down, height down to five to 10 storeys adjacent Clarence Street with a featured corner building um, of 15 storeys at the corner. Notably what this uh, master plan has sought to do is also to provide a significant setback from Clarence Street to the low rise towers fronting Clarence Street. These, um, as so would now I'll, I'll take the time to hand over to Julie, who'll explain the process and we'll come back to some of the um, 
key aspects of the master plan and your questions. Thanks, Sam. And you can hear me clearly. I'd like to outline three key important points about the planning application pathway we are following and how you can engage in that process. Um, the page in front of you um, outlines some of the information that I'm going to go through with you. The MARTA, firstly, the MARTA is applying for an administerial infrastructure designation, as Graham has highlighted earlier, for the area identified uh, on the grey plan that you can see there. This process is managed by the state government and is used for assessing essential infrastructure. This means that only certain uses can access this process and includes things such as hospitals, education facilities, and essential infrastructure such as water and sewer. Why is the MARTA using this process, people ask? It allows the MARTA to plan long-term across the precinct. It provides flexibility to adapt to clinical needs. <clears throat> some of those we know now and some of those emerge with technology um, in the future. And, and front loads is what we call in planning terms, the approval process, which means it minimizes subsequent approval process through the life cycle of the precinct. The process has several steps that you can see outlined in the diagram there. We're at the start of the process being step two and undertaking what we call preliminary stakeholder engagement of which this community forum is one of those activities. The purpose of the early engagement is twofold. One is to socialize the proposal early with key stakeholders such as yourselves. And secondly, to seek early feedback from stakeholders on what they see are the key issues and opportunities. The MARTA will collate the early feedback and provide this to the Minister. Once we've moved into the formal assessment process, the MARTA will undertake detailed technical assessments to support the detailed assessment of the application. It's important to highlight that there will be another opportunity at uh, this point for detailed community consultation. This consultation will include a range of stakeholders, such as elected representatives, adjoining owners, relevant Indigenous groups, the local government and the broader community. This is anticipated to occur, occur later this year. The feedback from this consultation will be documented and the MARTA will need to provide information on how the proposal addresses the feedback. The Minister will then make a final decision on our application. The second key point is that the Ministerial Infrastructure Designation is an opportunity for you as community to provide input and feedback. Many people say this process goes around planning processes, but in fact, the ID process provides more opportunity for community input than through a Brisbane City Council code assessment process that currently applies to the site for new buildings. The MARTA's core values of dignity, compassion, integrity and excellence have informed the development of the consultation program, which was required to be approved by the state government. We are undertaking the consultation program and we acknowledge that this has been influenced by the COVID requirements, but the program is also above the minimum standards set by the state government. The third point is that you may find some or many of your questions tonight may not be answered or perhaps only in part. We acknowledge that this can be frustrating, but it's important to note that we are early in the planning approval pathway and have not completed the detailed assessments. This means that we are here to listen and understand the views of all stakeholders and to ensure our detailed assessment considers these. Finally, a reminder that the submission closure date is on Monday the 6th of September. So on behalf of the matter, I look forward to the following Q&A uh, that we're about to undertake, and please reach out after this session if you have any further queries. Thanks, Graham, Sam and Julie. So I'm just going to stop the recording now. I'll press that button.